In today's video, you're going to learn the 10 most broken things you can abuse for free low in Season 14. With Riot only doing one month of balance tests on the PBE, well, let's just say a couple of things fell through the cracks. Tanks are on the rise and poised to take over the mid lane meta. Supports are becoming the new carry, and Riot secretly buffed Lethality without telling anybody. If you want to start off your rank climb with some easy LP gains, well, then we got you covered. And why am I so confident? Well, taking players and getting them results fast is exactly what we specialize in at skillcap.com. Take our course on getting diamond in 30 days, over 35 star ratings from satisfied customers saying how this one course alone is worth their entire membership. Or take our course on the best way to jungle in solo queue. Perfect 5 star reviews with users saying how this showed exactly why they were stuck at their rank. We have the largest collection of premium courses tailored for every single role. And the best part is you can try out our service completely risk free. If you don't rank up while actively using skill capped, you'll get your money back. No questions asked. So click the link in the description below to get the rank you've always wanted in Season 14. All right, now the first thing you should be abusing in Season 14 are tanks, and it's because of some huge item changes. Firstly, all the anti-tank items are either being removed or significantly nerfed. For example, Divine Sunderer is being removed from the game. This gave Bruisers an item that would deal percent damage based on the opponent's maximum health. This was perfect for countering tanks. They replaced this item with a new one called Sundered Sky, a similar item, but instead of the empowered auto attack dealing percent max health damage, it now just crits. At the same time, Leandries, which is the mage's counter to tanks, is getting hard nerfed. It basically deals half as much damage to tanks than before. And on top of all of this, Demonic Embrace is being completely removed from the game. That's another tank busting item that did damage based on opponent's max health. And this doesn't even include the big change to Hullbreaker, which was previously dominating the top lane meta, as it no longer gives you the big boost to your resistances like before. That's just the first part. The second part is there are some truly powerful tank items being added to the game. The new Kanic Rickern is insane, giving you a magic shield after not taking damage for 12 seconds that will scale off your health. So yeah, good luck laning as an AP champion against a tank, as they can walk in with a shield clear the whole wave while it tanks your damage, and just get the shield back by the time the next wave arrives. In fact, don't be too surprised if you start seeing things like Tank Scion mid because of this. It's not just that one new item either, the new Force of Nature is looking disgusting. When at max stacks, you will gain 70 magic resist, that's more than double than the 30 you would gain before, on top of you hitting those max stacks faster at 8 instead of 10. Tanks also have Hollow Radiance now, a new item that's just a magic resist version of Sunfire Cape, and the new item Unending Despair, which after 7 seconds in combat will deal damage to nearby enemies, scaling off your max health and heal you for 250% of the damage dealt. So yeah, overall, tanks are getting some really big buffs, and that just may leave the rest of the rift under-equipped to deal with them, at least at the start of the season. Well, that is, unless you take advantage of on-hit builds. You see, the only tank shredding build that didn't get nerfed, or the on-hit builds, they actually got buffed. Riot added a new item called Terminus. This has a passive where your autos will generate armor and magic penetration up to 30%, while also granting you armor and magic resist per attack up to 25. Combine this new item with Rageblade and a Blade of the Rune King, and you'll shred through anyone, including tanks. A Bork Rush into Rageblade into Terminus is going to both hit harder and scale better than the previous season's on-hit builds. Keep in mind, last season, these types of on-hit builds would always go Bork, Rageblade into Wit's End. Terminus is now effectively replacing Wit's End while being the much stronger item. Especially now, as Wit's End is actually getting a less than ideal change for these on-hit builds. They're removing the attack damage on it as well as the movement speed in place of a 20% tenacity bonus. One other important thing to be aware of is that every item in the game in general will have less ability haste now, so less spell spamming overall. This indirectly gives is a big buff to more consistent DPS champions, such as attack speed based on hit builds. Additionally, as you'll uncover later in this video, Riot is making a lot of changes that are aimed at making games snowball less and last longer. And traditionally, on hit builds as well as the champions that use them are more late game scaling champions. Think of Kale, Kogma, and Varus, just to name a few, as champions that will shoot up in power with these items. So if you're the kind of player who likes to scale into a 1v9 carry, well, there's no better time than now to do that. Now, if you're a player that isn't interested in scaling and instead just wants to snowball early, well, surprisingly, I have some great news. Riot actually made a huge buff to Lethality that has been going completely under the radar. Lethality is being changed so that it no longer scales with your level and just gives you all of it straight away. So for example, before in Season 13, if you gained 18 Lethality from an item, you wouldn't actually immediately gain 18. You would scale from 11.2 at level 1 to 18 Lethality at level 18. Now, if your item says 18 Lethality, you get 18, regardless of your level. In short, this means every single Lethality item is basically stronger than before. While at the same time, since the Mythic system is being removed, nearly every Lethality item is also cheaper. There are also three new Lethality items that are looking incredibly strong. The first one is Voltaic Cyclo Sword. This is effectively replacing last season's Prowler's Claw, which is being removed. It has the same stats, except it's 100 gold cheaper, and remember, the Lethality it now gives is the full amount straight away. The passive also now triggers on any attack, instead of having to dash or stealth first like with Prowlers, while slowing for longer. The damage proc will also reset faster by using any dash or stealth, whereas Prowlers had a flat 5 second cooldown. Basically, it's nearly better in every 
single way. The second item to be on the lookout for is a new one called Opportunity. It's insanely cheap at 2700 gold. At first, it does seem a bit lackluster as it just gives the same stats as other lethality items, and its passive, Extraction, which gives you movement speed when an enemy dies that you damage, isn't exactly super impressive. However, it's the other passive, Preparation, that's kind of hidden OP. It will grant you 5 to 10 lethality based on your level after being out of combat for 8 seconds. It will then last for 3 seconds after dealing damage to champions. Now, that may not seem like much, but you have to remember, you gain the full effects of lethality in Season 14. So, let's say you rush Voltaic Cyclo Sword for the immediate spike, and then get Opportunity 2nd and are level 9. That would be around 42 lethality with those two items. Last season, if you rushed any two lethality items, at most, you would gain 29 lethality at level 9. So you're gaining 13 more lethality at a lower price. So yeah, as you can imagine, lethality builds now are much stronger early on. And we haven't even mentioned the third lethality item, Profane Hydra. This is going to be the go-to first item rush on most assassin mids and junglers. It gives you incredible wave clear and jungle clear just by purchasing one of its components, Tiamat. Then, upon completion, you get an active that does burst damage based on the enemy's missing health. This is on top of the item giving assassins practically every stat they want. Now, I know in that example, it was mainly focused on assassins, but 80 carries need to be on the lookout for these items as well. Specifically, any 80 carries that were building Collector, such as Samira, as it got a minor buff. Combining that with the new opportunity, and you have a way stronger two item spike than before. You have to keep in mind, Triforce got changed, where its passive no longer increases your base attack damage up to 18%. So a lot of ADCs that rush Triforce in Season 13 will be much weaker in the new season if they don't adapt their builds. In fact, the new lethality item Hubris can also be a great first item purchase on ADCs that snowball early, especially if they benefit from raw attack damage like Draven. If you generate a lot of early statues, you can snowball over the whole game with a Collector second purchase into a Bloodthirster. So yeah, if you want to stay ahead of the curve, jump on the lethality stacking train before it inevitably gets nerfed. Now, if you instead prefer your one-shotting to come from magic damage rather than AD, well, do I have an item combo for you to abuse? Mage items got a massive overhaul in Season 14, but there are two specific items that stand out as being especially powerful. It's Shadow Flame and Storm Surge. Shadow Flame's passive was completely reworked, where before in Season 13, it would ignore champions' magic resistance based on the enemy health or if they were affected by a shield. Now, it's really crazy. Both your magic damage and true damage will critically strike enemies below 35% health, dealing 20% increased damage. On top of this, it now gives 120 AP, increased from 100, and 12 flat magic penetration instead of the 200 health. I mean, this is crazy, it's just pure raw damage. When you then combine this with the other new item, Storm Surge, well that one has a passive where dealing 35% of a champion's max health will strike them with lightning after 2 seconds. These two items together could just delete champions from the game. Oh, and I forgot to mention, Storm Surge also has 10 magic penetration. So if you combine these two items together, along with Sork Shoes, you will have 40 flat magic pen. Now, there are two main ways AP champions will want to be making use of this combo. If you're a traditional control mage like Syndra or Orianna, then you'll first build the new item Caster's Companion, which also has a passive that does burst damage. This is because you'll need the mana from it early on. You can then build Sork Shoes into Storm Surge into Shadow Flame. Then build a Void Staff next for the percentage magic penetration, and you'll basically be doing true damage to squishy targets with three item passives that proc to increase your burst. Now, if you're a mana-less champion or just an AP jungler that doesn't deal with the same mana issues as laners, you should consider rushing the new Rocket Belt as it now only costs 2,500 gold. You get the super valuable active for cheap and then can rush Storm Surge into Shadow Flame after. Think of champions like Echo, Elise, and Evelyn. Also, if you don't find value in that Rocket Belt active, you want to just rush a Storm Surge. Champions with mobility in their kit already, like Diana, will be terrorizing the Rift with this new item as it's incredibly overpowered. And speaking of all the new items, one role that's receiving massive buffs due to item changes are supports. Riot is removing all the starter items for supports with only one to pick from. This new support item is called World Atlas and it's pretty busted. You not only gain passive gold from it, but you can also generate gold with charges that activate from either damaging champions or by killing a minion. A nice change is now killing a minion grants you 20 gold no matter what type it is, while granting your nearest ally the full kill gold. This means prioritizing siege minions with your charges is no longer a thing. Here's why the new support changes are so busted. Firstly, the new item grants 3 gold per 10 seconds, whereas the old support item only granted 2. Once upgraded, it will then immediately grant 5 gold per 10 seconds, whereas again the old support items only granted 3. Same with the final upgrade. On top of all of this, the new charge mechanic just outright generates way more gold than last season's support items. So yeah, supports will now have a lot more gold to spend than last season. And keep in mind, your support item upgrades when you generate 500 and 1000 gold from the item. So since you're now generating more gold from the item itself, you actually get to upgrade it sooner. If all of this wasn't enough, at your final upgrade, you get a pick between 5 new support items that are like 1000 times more powerful.
powerful than last season's upgrades. I'm not even kidding. Celestial Opposition gives you 40% damage reduction for two seconds after taking damage from a champion. After wearing off, it will unleash a shockwave slowing for 50%. Solstice Slay will grant you and a nearby ally with the lowest health, 120 bonus health, and 90 movement speed for four seconds when you slow or immobilize enemies. Blood Song grants your next attack after using an ability, an additional 75 flat damage, and applies exposed weakness, increasing the damage they take by 12% for melee and 8% for range. And Dream Maker grants you a blue and purple dream bubble every eight seconds. A heal or a shield on an ally blows both bubbles to them. The blue bubble reduces 140 incoming damage, and the purple bubble grants 90 bonus magic damage on their next hit. And remember, all of these upgrades are free, so these support upgrades are actually looking more powerful than full items you have to purchase. Combine all of this with the fact that the mythic system is being removed, which means Riot effectively lowered the cost on any previous support mythics from 2300 gold to 2200, and supports can now combine the power of these mythics together instead of only having to build one. Basically, what all of this means is don't be surprised if support becomes the new strongest role at the start of Season 14. Moving on, many players are excited about the new Void Grubs added to the Rift. Last season, prior to these new monsters, a Rift Herald would spawn at 8 minutes instead. This Rift Herald was so valuable that often everyone would just stop what they're doing and rotate to it at 8 minutes to fight over it. This is because for whichever team got that Rift Herald, they could then use it on a tower before turret plates fall at 14 minutes and easily swing upwards of 1000 gold to their team. So keep in mind, that 8 minute Rift Herald is now gone, and in its place are the 3 Void Grubs that spawn even earlier, at 5 minutes. So does that mean everyone needs to drop what they're doing to roam even earlier now? Well, no, quite the opposite. Riot themselves have been repeatedly saying how they're trying to reduce snowballing in League. Keep in mind, for each Void Grub slain, you get a stack of Touch of the Void, which will cause your basic attacks to apply a true damage burn to towers. At 5 stacks, you spawn a damaging Void Might when attacking structures, and at 6, you'll spawn 2. Here's the thing, only 3 will spawn at 5 minutes. They then take another 4 minutes to respawn once you've taken them down. This means you won't be getting 5 or 6 stacks until around around 9 to 10 minutes at the earliest. It just isn't like the old Rift Herald, where you'd see a chance to drop it and suddenly inject 1k gold to your team with little to no counterplay for the enemy. Sure, you'll do more damage to towers with the Touch of the Void buff, but this will be done slowly over multiple waves that you push in, and you then have to repeatedly auto-attack the tower on each of these waves, causing you to be overextended during that time. Basically, consider the Void Grubs to be a nice boost to your team, but it's not essential like the Rift Herald was. You really want to take advantage of the fact that a lot of players are going to be overvaluing this objective at the start of the season. So, instead of skipping things like jungle camps, minions, dragons, ganks, and roams, etc. In order to take those void grubs, treat it more like a backup plan. Fall back on taking them when you have nothing else to do, or as a response to an enemy taking something on the other side of the map like dragon. Alright, and now, with void grubs in the game, it means there's only one Rift Herald spawn that will be at 14 minutes. The problem with this is, as we mentioned, this is exactly when turret plates fall, significantly reducing the value of a Rift Herald, as using it on a tower won't get you nearly as much gold. And do keep in mind, any gold you do generate from taking the tower is happening much later, meaning it's a smaller percentage of the total total gold in the game. Don't get me wrong though, the new Rift Herald is more powerful when used since you can control the charge, does more damage to towers along with spawning void mites to help take them down. You can even reset the charge by destroying the tower, then hop back in to rotate to another side of the map to get picks there. However, a 14 minute Rift Herald, even when buffed, is simply not as impactful as the old 8 minute Herald. Again, this is completely intentional by Riot as they try to reduce the amount of snowballing in the game. The side effect of this though, is that relative to Void Grubs and Rift Herald, dragons are now much more valuable. You see, most players remember dragons were nerfed back in patch 13.20, where their individual buffs were reduced. However, they often forget in that same patch, they also significantly buffed Dragon Souls. So, with less snowballing in the early game, securing these early dragons becomes that much more important. Games are going to be going longer, and the Dragon Soul becomes a much bigger win condition than before. And of course, whenever Dragon becomes more valuable, that naturally means a lot more action in the bot lane, since they have a large influence over which team takes it. Simultaneously, Riot made a bunch of changes to the terrain that makes ganking bot lane a lot easier. Firstly, they added this new gank path on the red team side. Secondly, they removed this giant wall that would force players to move through river or take a very long detour deep into the enemy's jungle. Riot has now destroyed that wall, and in its place is a much quicker path to take as an alternative to the river. Combine this with a new gang path on bot lane, and you can start to see how it's looking a lot more vulnerable than before. And thirdly, if we take a look at the other lanes, starting with top, you'll notice Riot have actually added a wall, making it harder to gank. While in mid lane, they pushed the brushes further back into the river, letting them spot ganks earlier. They also removed this easy gank path on mid, now forcing anyone taking it to have to tank quite a few turret shots. So when you take all these changes into consideration, 
position, you start to see how getting your bot lane ahead is going to be a very powerful strategy in Season 14. And another new addition to Summoner's Rift are the Void versions of Red and Blue buffs. Once the Baron spawns at 20 minutes, the next time a Blue or Red buff respawn, it will rise as Voidborn Sentinel and Voidborn Brambleback respectively. This transformation also comes with increased durability, making them harder to take down. That's only due to the insane benefit you get when doing so. Once slain, Blue and Red will grant their buffs to the entire team of the player that takes them down, meaning your entire team can have all Red buffs and Blue buffs at the same time. The only exception is that any dead allies at the time of the takedown won't receive the buffs, similar to how Baron works. Here's the thing, this is way more powerful than players realize, as stealing the enemy's buffs will also grant your team these buffs while denying them from the enemy. What this means is past 20 minutes, in order to snowball effectively, you need to be stealing the enemy's buffs on cooldown. And here's a nice trick, what you can do is actually prioritize stealing the enemy's buffs first whenever they spawn, instead of taking your own. You then keep your own buffs alive, and avoid taking them. The buffs you stole will last 2 minutes, so once the buffs expire, you then go into your own juggle to take yours to refresh them. This will grant your entire team 4 minutes of red and blue buffs. The best part is these red and blue camps respawn every 5 minutes, so you can just cycle this for the remainder of the game, giving your whole team near permanent red and blue buffs. There's another void monster that's been going under the radar, and it's the new void scuttler, and it's actually a game changer. Just like with the red and blue buffs, after 20 minutes, all following rift scuttlers will spawn as a void born scuttler. When slain, it will send out a massive scryer's bloom effect, revealing all champions and wards in a large surrounding area. And similar to scryers, all wards revealed this way will be reduced to 1 HP. Before this change, if a rift scuttler spawned near a baron or dragon, it would barely matter. Sure, you take it for the movement speed boost circle and vision, but it really wasn't a huge priority. Now, if a void born scuttler spawns near an objective, you absolutely need to prioritize taking it. Without it, you're going to have to rely on your support and other teammates to be using control wards and sweepers to gain vision control, and let's be honest, that does not happen in solo queue. Instead, only one person, hint, I'm talking about you, can take the void born scuttler and then just clear all enemy wards in the area while guaranteeing they won't get caught out as it reveals so much around them. I promise you, players will be sleeping on just how important these void born scuttlers are, so pay attention to the scuttle spawns after 20 minutes and look to take them as soon as you can. Alright, and if you want to truly improve and see results fast in Season 14, then come join us at skillcap.com. We focus on the things that actually help you climb ranks and simplify them so they're easy to understand. We have the most extensive collection of premium courses tailored for every role. Still skeptical? Don't worry, you can try us out completely risk-free. If you don't rank up while actively using Skillcapped, you get your money back. No questions asked. So what are you waiting for? Start Season 14 with Skillcapped by your side, and click the link in the description below to get the rank you've always wanted. Alright, and that will wrap things up. Good luck in your climb in Season 14, and we want to thank you for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.